This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. Welcome back. If you've sold a house, a car, or any other piece of property, then you know that selling can be tricky. From finding a buyer to filling out the right paperwork, there's a lot of little steps to keep track of throughout the selling process, and selling timber is like that too. Now, there are several steps to the process, many of which may be new to you, so to learn more about the process and how to do it successfully, we have Danny Hartwick from the Missouri Department of Conservation here to break it all down for us. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So tell us more about the process of selling timber? Well, a lot of people will sell timber on a yearly basis, and what they're not thinking about is timber is probably behind their land the longest term investment that they have. So it's very important that you make good decisions and you, and you sell your timber properly and you sell the right timber that you have. So why should somebody harvest uh, their timber? There, there are a few reasons that you should sell your timber. Um, one, for the health of the timber. Mm -hmm. um, by going in and taking out mature and over mature trees, you're thinning that and uh, causing the other trees to grow more vigorously. It helps fight off insects and disease. Um, you may have trees that are damaged due to storms, ice storms and such. Mm -hmm. um, you may want to just be opening it up to uh, release more sunlight to the ground for wildlife. Mm -hmm. so. so with that being said, now can the actual process of removing and harvesting, can that actually get ugly? Will it make your it, land it, look it ugly? It really can, and that's what a lot of people do not like timber sales because mm -hmm. it, it looks ugly. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that we do to make it... Um, prettier versus <laughs> as ugly as it can be, right. um, but it can be ugly. Now what you need to realize is there are ways that you can, you can improve that. Um, in about seven years, most of the tops and things that you've cut and left in the woods should break down, but people going in and, and harvesting firewood from those tops mm -hmm. and things like that help clean it up and help your woods heal quicker. Mm -hmm. So um, along with that, uh, we have some best management practices that we encourage loggers to use. Mm -hmm. um, so they use those on your forest trails and the skid trails that they'll use. And when they do that, then they can prevent as much soil loss out of that timber sale as possible. And that allows your land to heal faster as well. Interesting, interesting. So my next question is, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, how do they know or how can they determine how much uh, their timber is worth? Well, it just depends. Okay. Um, just like anything else, uh, it depends on how much you have, what current prices are. What I find most people doing is, is selling timber for what sounds like a lot of money. Mm -hmm. if, if you have a patch of timber out back and somebody comes in and offers you $10,000, that sounds great. $10,000 is a good amount of money. Mm -hmm. So you're willing to take that. Um, I find it interesting. People will sell things all day with, that, with doing research and knowing to the penny. A farmer, for example, wouldn't go and sell his beans without knowing what the top price is of right. which elevator to the penny, but they sell timber every day for, for what this good amount is. So what you really need to do is, is get a professional forester involved. Mm -hmm. And whether that's a forester from the Department of Conservation or from the Missouri Consulting Foresters Association, mm -hmm. same folks, we get the same degree, we went to school together, mm -hmm. learned the same things. They just work for themselves mm -hmm. versus where we work for the state. Um, and a forester can come in and inventory your woods, mm -hmm. see what you have. They can actually mark the trees that need to come out versus mm -hmm. the trees that need to stay. So you have successful harvests down the road. Mm -hmm. And then through that, they can help determine what your timber is worth mm -hmm. and help you through the bid process. Now, the bid process can be crazy. The first timber sale that I ever did for myself, um, I had three bids come in that day. Mm -hmm. $3,000, 12100 and 16500 wow. So people that own timber need to realize the guy who shows up at your door and just offers you some money, maybe the guy who's paying 16000 mm -hmm. he's more likely to be the guy who's paying 3000 Interesting, so. interesting. Well, definitely keep that in mind. My last question is, I know you had mentioned that, yes, it could be an ugly process and stuff. Now, how will it affect wildlife? Will it affect it dramatically? Will it bring more wildlife? I know a lot of people are worried about that. Yes, and especially as we're right here going yeah. into deer season. Mm -hmm. um, Timber harvest can actually be very beneficial to wildlife. Um, deer are browsers, mm -hmm. and so they like that fresh growth coming up off the floor. Mm -hmm. They love the acorns from the mature trees. Now, okay. don't get me wrong, but uh, when you get uh, sunlight to the floor, you get more sprouts coming up. You get more uh, grasses and forbs growing in mm -hmm. your timber. 
and, and deer love that type of thing. Same thing with turkeys, those grasses and forbs, a lot of insects use those. So turkey will be going through there using that. Um, along the edge, you might have quail using that area. So it can be very beneficial. Um, in places where we cut a little harder, if you, if you have a portion of your stand that mm -hmm. is um, all over mature and we take out several, several trees there, um, you can provide, it may grow up really thick there and provide great escape cover for your wildlife. All right. So. All right. Well, all really good and valid information. And I know that you had uh, emailed me some beneficial links uh, yes. to the process. So what we'll do is we'll link up everything on our website at heartlandconnection.com. And we'll also link up Missouri Department of Conservation's website if they have any questions or concerns or just need to get to in contact with you to ask some more questions. All right. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Danny, for coming great. on. Thanks for having me, Ella. And we'll be right back.